given an array of integers, return the largest possible sum of its elements after negating it k times. How can we do that? That's about today's video. Let's dive in. San Francisco Bay Area, or Silicon Valley. This is where my dream started. Hi everybody, this is Steve here. Today we are going through legal problem 1005, maximize sum of array after k negations. Uh, let's go through the problem description first. Given an array of integers, we must modify the array in the following way. We choose an i and replace ai with minus ai, and we repeat this process k times in total. We may choose the same index i multiple times. The question is asking us to return the largest possible sum of the array after modifying it in this way. Let's walk through a few examples. Example uh, 1, which is we're given this array, 4, 2, 3, and k is 1, which means we we'll negate only once any, any of the elements. But uh, remember, we need to return the largest possible sum after doing negation k times. So the output is fine. We, there, is, um, there, there is only one possible um, option, which is we basically um, negate the element at index 1, which is the smallest element in this array, which is 2, right? We negate this one, so it becomes minus 2. So we sum up all of these three elements. It gives us the largest possible sum, which is 5. That's for example 1. Example 2, let's take a quick look. k is not equal to 1. k equals to 3, which means we need to negate the elements in the array three times. And then we'll try to find the largest possible sum. The largest possible sum, for example, 2 is 6. How do we get there? We choose indices 1, 2, 2. So 1 is this one. We flip this one to be a positive 1. And then we flip in indices 2, 2. It can be uh, 2, 2 is um, 0. We flip it to minus 0 and back to positive 0. Anyway, it doesn't change. So uh, this, uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be 2, 2. It could be uh, 1, 0, 0 or 1, 1, 1 or uh, no, one, one, one will not work because uh, we flip uh, it back to oh, it will still work, and uh, we can also it can also be a one three three, um, as long as it's we flip the same number even times, it's going to become itself, right? So it doesn't matter. So uh, in this case, we see that it's flipping the only negative number back to um, the its positive counterpart, so we get the maximum largest possible sum, which is 6. Uh, these two uh, simple examples. And then let's look at example 3, which is giving us, uh, it's asking us to flip the elements in the array twice, any of the elements, but we want to return the largest possible sum. So there are more than two elements that are inactive, which means we want to, <laughs> very intuitive, we want to flip the largest possible negative numbers or the smallest by absolute value the smallest um, by value um, the the smaller than um, the negative value is is basically the smaller the value are um, the bigger its absolute values will be so we want to flip the negative numbers with the possible with the biggest possible absolute values so in this case it's going to be uh, negative 4 and negative 3. So we flip these two, which are at indices 1 and 4, and then it becomes this. This way we can get the largest possible sum. Okay, now we have gone through the problem description. We have a basic understanding of what the problem is asking us to do. Feel free to pause the video if you need a second to think about how you would tackle this problem. Basically, we need to sort this um, array first. Why? Because we want to find the smallest possible value. That's the ones that we would like to flip. And also the second, um, second thing that uh, I guess you should probably have noticed, it, which is we need to pay attention to the, the, the number k, whether it's an odd or even number after we flip all of the negative numbers to positive. If in case k is an odd number, then we want to find the smallest possible number in the array at that time and flip that number. Um, and then if k after we negating all of the uh, all of the negative numbers to positive, if k is an even number, we can just sim safely ignore it 
right? Because um, any number negating by itself twice is going to become itself again. At that moment, all of the numbers in that case, it's all positive. So we can save, we can just ignore, uh, we can just return the result. So um, with that said, a few options come into mind. Uh, one idea is to uh, take advantage of priority queue heap, the min heap, which is um, basically a binary tree with the minimum node sitting on top of the tree or at the root of the tree. And every time when we pull or peak the heap, we're going to get the smallest element in this current um, min heap. And then every time we'll just uh, negate the smallest number possible in the current min heap until we have negated all of the elements in this min heap k times. That's it. Uh, how can we do that? Let's just walk through uh, one example. Say, for example, 2 minus, two minus 1 and uh, 2 minus 3. 2 minus 3 uh, minus 1, 5 and minus 4. So uh, this is the given. Uh, this is the given input. So we we'll, so first we build the min heap. We'll put every and um, everything into this heap, and it's going to we we'll just visualize or uh, type it in the sorted array order. But it's actually it's going to be an a min heap. That's how that's the data structure that we're going to use. So first we don't negate anything. We just put the original input into the min heap. It's going to be minus four minus three, minus one, two, and five. Is that correct? Minus four, minus three, minus one, two, and five. Yeah. So this is the original min heap that we built after just iterating through all of the given elements. And then we'll just keep pulling, keep pulling the smallest element, the smallest elements from this min heap elements from this min heap uh, and negate, negate it and put it back into the heap. That's what we're going to do. So first step, step one, we pull. Pull is going to give us the smallest number, which is minus four, and then we negate that, which is going to give us the largest possible number, right? So we'll negate and we'll negate all of these elements k times, and we just stop at k times. So step one, we're going to do a minus four becomes four. And then this moment, this sorted mean heap becomes this. Not minus four is not, minus four is not the smallest anymore. It becomes uh, four. We, we, after we flip, after we pull the smallest element out of the min heap, we'll flip it and put it back into the min heap. Remember, after we put, after we call put or offer this API of the priority queue, it's going to automatically sort, put the inserted value into the correct position of this binary tree. All right, and then our next step is to, next step, Step two, we'll just keep pulling the next smallest element, which is going to be minus three. Then we flip it, negate it to be uh, positive three. And then at this moment, uh, negative three is gone, and we have a positive three to be inserted in. That becomes three, four, five. That's it. And remember, K, there are, we can only negate k times, which is twice for this case. And then this is the largest possible sum of this array, which is going to be minus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus what? Uh, plus 4 plus 5. That's giving us uh, 13, which is, let's see, 13, which is the correct value. Um, I hope that makes sense. We can um, go through these two examples as well, but it's going to give us, uh, it's, it's basically the same thing. We just, uh, we build first, uh, we initialize a binary, a binary tree um, or priority queue, which um, we just uh, have the minimum element sitting at the root of the value. And then we'll just uh, keep pulling the elements k times and negating every single element that we pulled out of this main heap and put it back. And when, 
Um, after we do this operation k times, well then we'll just uh, pull all of the elements out and sum, sum all of them up. That's going to give us the largest possible sum. That's the algorithm. That's the first algorithm. Let's put that into code before we talk about the second algorithm to uh, solve this problem. Pri all priority q integer, uh, yeah, heap. Let's call it heap priority q. Uh, that's it. Uh, by default, it's a min heap. So we're good on that. We don't need to implement a customized uh, comparator. And then we put everything in into num a into heap offer none. This is the first step. Remember, this is the first step. We put this entire given original input, unsorted input array into the main heap, and then we get a heap in a priority queue, which gives us the neat features, which is to help us pull the smallest element. And then we'll just uh, keep pulling the smallest elements k times and negate it and put it back k minus minus greater than zero, which means as long as k is greater than zero, we will just keep continue, uh, keep going. So heap uh, offer, uh, heap offer, uh, negate this one, heap pull. We we'll just keep pulling, which means this API is giving us the smallest possible element of the current heap, and then we just put an active sign in front of it to negate it, and then put this entire thing back into this heap. Now this heap, after k steps, for example, k equals to k equals to two here. So after two steps, the main heap is becoming something like this. So at this moment, we're just going to um, pull all of the elements out of the main heap and sum, sum all of them up. That's going to give us the uh, result. So we'll do that while heap is empty. If it's not empty, we'll create an element, uh, a variable, heap pull. Just keep pulling everything. Then return sum. That's it. I'm trying to hit submit and see. All right, it's accepted. Um, that's the uh, that's the way how we can solve this problem um, using priority queue. Uh, big shout out to uh, this user who came up with this solution. It's very simple, easy solution. Ebo, a big shout out to this user. A very cool and neat solution. All right, this is one solution of solving this problem. Another solution that we can use to solve this problem is that we can solve this array. Remember, we always would like to um, flip all of the uh, largest uh, or smallest negative values first until we have exhausted the negation k times. So step one will sort this array and step two will keep decrementing k value and every time we decrement k value we'll just flip all of the, we'll, we'll just flip one negative value until k is not greater than uh, zero anymore. Third step will just uh, um, add, add up all of the elements in this sorted and negated array. And while we add up all of the sums, we'll keep track of the minimum possible value in this array. And in the end, step four, we'll just uh, return the sum and we'll pay attention to the k at this time. If k, if the remaining k is, is an even number, then we'll just simply return the sum. Which, why can we do that? Because again, if k is an even number, that means we can just uh, simply flip any single, any number twice, and then that number just becomes itself. But if k is an odd number at that time, reduce that number, the twice of that number from the sum. Why? We need to reduce it twice because we have added that number twice while we are doing the sum the, in step three. Let's put that into code, uh, into the code. Then we can, we'll have a better understanding of, and. Then we can walk through that in more details. Let's see. Uh, put that uh, first. We'll sort this array. And uh, next, what we are going to do is that for int i, we'll just uh, negate all of the numbers that are that's active until we have 
um, done this k times i is smaller than length just in case and k is greater than zero and a i is smaller than, is an active number we'll just do i plus plus i plus plus and k minus minus next step what we're going to do is to change this one flip negate this number negate this number no minus sign after this one is done we'll just uh, um, keep track of the minimum number and min we'll have a min number here or we'll just to use the very first number and then we'll have another variable sum which is the one that that we're going to return give it as zero uh, while we'll actually just go through this um, this sorted array int num in a sum we'll just add, add up all of them while we are adding all of them up we'll keep track of the um, the minimum value in this array min and then num in the end we'll return if k is an odd or even number if it's an even number we'll just return sum otherwise we'll just return to twice the the minimum number uh, then let's try to understand why we need to subtract the subtract the uh, twice of the minimum number from the sum if k is an odd number in this case uh, we'll just uh, quickly use this example um, the example one here to help us understand uh, what actually is going on uh, 4 2 3 let's use 4 2 3 here 4 2 3 and k equals to 1 k is an odd number in here in this case and we know the correct value is going to be 5 which is we're going to negate to make it become like this and then sum is 5 right uh, but let's follow the steps that we did in this case first step we'll sort this array we'll sort this array so this array becomes 2 3 and 4 and then um, after that we'll just uh, negate all of the numbers uh, all of the negative numbers k times we were looking here there are no negative numbers so we cannot negate anything anything and then we'll just sk skip, skip to step three we'll just add up all of the numbers while keeping track of the minimum possible value in this array we know the mean value is two and the sum in this case is two plus three plus three plus four which gives us five uh, which is nine right so we got nine in this case but we actually know the correct sum is five so that is the twice of the minimum value because of why because first we shouldn't add this two because this two is the smallest number that that's the mean that should be negated but we add it up and then um, after we negate it that's the, after we negate this number it becomes negative two that's actually the value that we should sum up that's why we need to subtract twice of the minimum value from this sum which is going to give us the correct value the explanation of the second algorithm i hope that makes sense to you and a big shout out to this guy uh, lee215 a super genius super smart guy who comes up with this algorithm and explains the time complexity space complexity of this entire algorithm i'm super amazed by him <laughs> time and time again i hope you guys learned something from this video and from this great um from these two great solutions and if you do please uh, don't forget to leave me a like button hit the like button and gently uh, tap the subscribe button and tap the bell notification so that each time when i publish a new video you don't miss out on anything that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.